Good morning, class. Good morning. Today, uh, Ms. Borba and uh, Mr. Kerbis, we are going to walk you through uh, a file that Ms. Borba put together about how to um, come up with your correlation coefficient and your linear regression line by hand or with Excel. So he's showing all the steps anyway. And uh, why would we need to do this? Um, we need to do this because if you only use technology, it's considered simple mathematics. So anytime you're doing sophisticated mathematics, you have to do it by hand as well in your project. So, and by hand means showing all the steps. So this counts as by hand, what we'll run through with you on Excel. Now we will leave this template up there for you. Um, obviously your data is not going to be um, comparing the percent bachelor degree or higher with uh, percent obesity, but this will run through a, an example of something that you can use as a template, so to speak. So uh, what, what do we start with here? Okay, the first thing we want to do is let's do a scatter plot of the two data, uh, two types of data we have, two, two types of data, between uh, percent bachelor degree or higher and obesity rate. And the way that we do that is you go to charts, we want a, an XY scatter plot, and our data is also highlighted already, the two columns of data that we want. Excellent. Now here's something I always have trouble with, and you helped me out this morning. This is obviously labeled not the way that we want. And so you showed me we go to toolbox here, hey? Right, we go to toolbox, and this is where all your options are to change things on your chart. So we want the chart title to be correct, Comparing education with obesity rate. We want to label our horizontal axis, and that is our X values, percent bachelor degree or higher. And then we want to label our Y. Our Y is the percent obesity rate. And what would we expect to see as a comparison here? Um, other labels, none. Legend, this thing over here, I don't like that. Series 1, it doesn't tell me anything, so let's get rid of that. So now you can see, what does that look like? It looks, when we're just looking at it, that it, there is a negative correlation. And now we want to see, um, we can have, actually have Excel calculate an R squared value for us. Okay, how do I do that? What you do is you have to put your cursor right on a point and right click, and then you go down to add trend line. Ah. And then if you want to see what the actual value is, you go to options, and then you click display R squared value on chart, and press OK. Well, we and can we can also, also do, oh, can do also that. Do the equation. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the, the machine doing the work, but we're going to calculate these values, and then, remember, we want Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is just r, the square root of this, um, and this line to be calculated as well by hand. But at least here we have the technology to check our answers. But remember, sophisticated math, we need to show all the method steps. The other thing you want to remember in your project is if you do not have a correlation, you do not put a line of best fit on there. You do not calculate a line of best fit if there's no correlation. And th this would be pretty close, wouldn't it? There's, a, there's quite a slight correlation yeah. there. We're pushing it a little bit here, right? But nevertheless, it's something. Nevertheless. Hmm. Probably not a good word to use in your project. That's right. What, we, what you can see now is all the formulas that you need to calculate the R value. And we're going to set them up here. You need x, y. There they are right there. We're going to calculate the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, and then the covariance x, y. And then we're going to do that by using Excel. Mr. Kerbis is busy. So I just copied the, the two cells. And we, I remember you told me I need to leave a line here because right. last time we had a problem. So I um, just took the data, the x values and the y values, x and y, and we're saying uh, this is depending on this. So we think about your independent and dependent axis as well. Now we're going to see the power of Excel, but you notice we're showing each of the steps. You don't want to do this with a calculator by hand, but you do need to show all those steps to the examiner. 
Otherwise, you're sitting at a three in, what is that criteria, C or D? Mathematics, yeah. Yeah. So here, we put in equals, and we want to do this value here, x, minus the mean. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a mean we yet. We don't do have we? a mean, yep. So we need to go back and figure out what our mean is. No, Excel hates me at the moment. <laughs> okay, so this is another thing you showed me. Here, under auto sum, you have average. I guess first I need to have it highlighted. So if I highlight this, highlight it. and then, what do I do? You need to have equals probably down there. You shouldn't be able. You shouldn't have to. Press so press that. First I highlight it, and then I click here. That doesn't make sense. No, you just click there and click. Yeah. Go up to auto sum. Yeah. Average. Ah, ah. Now, and the thing you want to check is make sure that your data is correctly highlighted. Ah, that you cool. have the right data span there. That's good. Okay, so then we're gonna do. Why don't we do y while we're at it as well? Oh yeah, that's cool. So then auto sum average, nice, and then check. Good. <clears throat> okay, so now we should be able to do this properly. Equals, and I'm doing x minus the mean twenty seven point one seven yeah. four five zero nine eight. Okay. Now Excel is quite clever. I take this, it'll change my x values as I go. Notice we type the mean by hand because otherwise uh, it causes a bit of a mess. So now y oops, equals y minus, minus 20.4901-9608. Okay. And just make sure that when you're copying and pasting once you're done into your project that, you know, you use landscape if you need to use landscape. or Make sure that your communication doesn't get uh, messed up by this process. Okay, so now we take these values and we want to square it. Which is the same as multiplying, multiplying it, by, it by itself. Okay. We're going to pull it down. Wee. Okay. And again. Um, it's this one, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can really see how quick Excel is. We, there have been students in the past, and we highly recommend against it, that have done this whole thing by, by hand. hand. And you on can your just calculator. see, gosh, the mistakes that they make. Gosh, do people say gosh? My mother does. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could be friends then. And like this, right? Yep. Okay, good. Now, the reason we need all these and uh, is that we can then find SX and SY and SXY, right? Right. So... If you notice from the formula, the first thing we have to do is we're going to need to sum the columns, right? We're going to need to sum the column of X minus X bar squared, Y minus Y bar squared, and X minus... And those, so the last three columns we need to sum. So we're going to go ahead then and highlight it and sum it. And you can just pull across if you want. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Just this corner? Yep. If you take the corner and pull across, it does that oh, for you. Okay, now we want to calculate SX, and that is the square root. So SQRT. SQRT. And then we just simply put in that value, and it's divided by 51 because we have 51 data points. That's our N. Nice. What is S Y? S Y is the standard deviation of all your Y values, and that's square root divided by fifty-one. And then our S X Y is simply this value, the value, the summed value divided by fifty-one. And what's the S X Y? That's the covariance. 
Good. Now we can calculate our R value. And that's going to be your covariance, SXY, divided by standard deviation of X times the standard deviation of Y. Good, now that's our R value, and what we actually have on our Excel chart is R squared. So let's just check that value and make sure it's the same. So we can take our R value and square it. And what you can see then is that we got 0 0.3748 for our R square value. If you go back and look at what Excel said, it was also very, very close to that value. The, the same. Same. Yeah, so um, just coming up with that very first one minute that we did won't get you sophisticated. Going through this process will get you one sophisticated process. Right. Um, we'll make another uh, vodcast of how to do a chi-squared the long way. But the main thing is that in addition to all this math, you're also doing some explaining as you're going through. Right. Okay. We got it all? We got it. Okay. Um, the only other thing here... There's also your formula in the formula booklet for um, the line of best fit. Once you have all the pieces, remember you can use that to get your line of best fit. And then you can start to make some kind of predictions and things for interpolation exactly. and extrapolation. Yeah. So Explaining um, what that line of best fit actually means and what the slope actually means. And uh, if, you want, if you want us to walk through that, um, just ask us, but I think uh, I think we've done well here. I think uh, yeah. the students should be very happy with the work we've put in this morning. Yes. <laughs>